So historically, our SCADA protocols were all proprietary, uh, which meant that they came created by each individual manufacturer, and if you wanted that particular product, you had to buy the system from that manufacturer. And the disadvantage in doing that was that the owner was locked into that particular system. Uh, you couldn't change a, the protocol, which are the rules for communicating. You couldn't change those if that was a proprietary protocol. You couldn't change um, because of the you had have to change to a another proprietary system, and so that was that was difficult uh, for us to um, to operate that way. We were locked into that manufacturer. We couldn't change uh, just to add a new facility. If it wasn't in that protocol, we had to do without it. So so then we basically came open standards, which enabled us to. Uh, buy equipment from any particular manufacturer and today all of our uh, modern SCADA systems are all open and we're moving away from proprietary proprietary systems. There's still a few proprietary systems around and it then becomes more difficult to um, to operate with equipment from, from different manufacturers. Okay, so that's that's where that all came from. So now, if we want our system to be interoperable, what that means is we need to have detailed specifications that any manufacturer can can purchase, which defines exactly how the uh, particular protocol works. And of course, they must be accurately implemented. So uh, it's not an option for the manufacturer to say, "Well, I don't, I can't be bothered introducing that feature." If it's part of the, the actual core part of the standard, we must implement that. And we'll see later on that this poses, um, when we have open standards such as uh, DNP3, uh, we have, uh, in fact, a huge number of options and we have to um, go to some lengths to ensure that we have interoperability by identifying which bits, of, which optional bits I'm implementing and which optional bits I'm not implementing. And so interoperable systems need detailed specs, they need to be accurately implemented by the manufacturers, and of course they have to be widely supported. And once we have that, we get the benefits of competition. And so you're now able to put equipment from different manufacturers on your system, and so you get uh, because of competition, you're not locked into one manufacturer, so if you find a better product for a different manufacturer, you're free to change to that, and so it gives you a greater choice of equipment. Okay, so so everyone happy with that? Any smiley face if you're happy, or um, questions if you would like to ask anything? Todd, have you got a question, or you? Okay, you just you're just happy. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. No problems. That's that's good. Okay, so so that's interop that's the interoperability, and we'll discuss that a little bit more detail uh, in the next next session uh, when we'll I'll talk about the open systems interconnection model, uh, which is the, the structure that uh, all our protocols fit into. But we'll, we'll look at that in more de in detail next time. The, uh, okay, so if we have open protocols, then we get interoperability between vendors. So I can buy my equipment from anywhere I like. Um, we can have fewer protocols we have to support. And of course, the cost of support is means that we've got to not only buy the software, but we've got to get uh, documentation, we've got to train people, all those sorts of things. So, um, so a few protocols to support makes it easier for, for us to, uh, and cheaper for us to, to run our system. As I say, we have reduced software costs. And 
we don't need protocol translators um, that we would need if we're going between uh, proprietary systems. And uh, of course, it means generally buying things off the shelf, the standard delivery schedules, less testing, maintenance, training, etc., better documentation, and we can also get independent conformance testing to make sure that our product does actually meet the uh, what the specification says. So, so all of those uh, come from having open open standards. And of course, the long term benefits we get from from that are that we have easy system expansion. Uh, if we want to add more features to our our SCADA system, we can put in new RTUs that have have different different firmware, and uh, we're able to um, expand our system. Um, we can have more longer product life, uh, basically because existing uh, firmware, we may be able to uh, change the firmware in our products to to in fact give additional features, um, and of course it means makes it possible for getting more value added products from the vendors. We can adopt new technology and of course the whole purpose of that is to get major operation savings so that it's it's become more efficient for us to operate our, our SCADA network.